Ooh, I think I'm working. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Well, you know, <clears throat> living the dream. Awesome. <clears throat> so welcome, three financial tools. The basis or foundation for the actual financial structure or what goes on with the, the money, the financial portion of your business. And of course, we had we had our financial partners, in other words, our financial advisors, our friends last week, talking about how to actually organize your own money, planning, investing, and protecting your assets and strength. And this time around, we're talking about what goes on with money in your business, how to protect it from a cash flow basis, the, the actual tools that you're going to be used, and then long-term what you're going to do to obviously set up and grow your own business itself. And I brought Danielle Pilon on from Danielle's SOS Bookkeeping and Accounting Service, and her business has grown rapidly in five years. In fact, it's starting to become a real force and, an, and a, and a de definite threat in the marketplace, and their platform is really simple. We make it really simple for you to get your bookkeeping, accounting, and taxes done, whether personal or professional, and as they like to say, say bring your dirty, smelly, rotten bo box of <laughs> papers to us, and we will take care of it from there. Yes. So, Danielle, thank you for coming on. You've handled Happy to. hundreds of businesses just in the past mm -hmm. year, yeah. thousands of people when it comes to their taxation, and, mm -hmm. of course, financial and your, your cash flow, the lifeblood of your business are part of the importance of what, what the services that you provide. But we're not here to gloss or to say, hey, use, use Danielle and her business. No, we're here to educate people, of course, more than anything else. So yes. foundationally, fundamentally, what do people need to focus on first? And when we're talking about things like cash flow management, the financial structure of their business, and the tools they have to use, let's focus on, these, on those three areas. And so that by the time people are done on this call, and as this webinar goes out to the world, later on in the coming days and weeks, People are going to get the foundation of the tools they need, first of all, to protect what they've got, especially in a challenging time like what we have, and more importantly, what they should be doing next, and then they can come and look for great resources to help them. Danny, Absolutely. please. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we're definitely in uh, an unprecedented time as far as the financial landscape of most business owners go. Um, I would definitely say that there was probably a degree of people that thought they were very solidly secure in what they do for business. And all of a sudden it was like somebody turned off a light switch and bam, everything that you thought you knew about your business has gone out the window. Um, there's no perfect roadmap for what to do during times like this, but very specifically, obviously been harassed with lots of lots and lots of questions on, on how do how do I do this? So when we're talking about financial tools, um, from my point of view right now, the most important thing to be worrying about is your cash flow. Now, hopefully not in a panicked sense. Um, yes, it's really hard to look at a you know finite number of fine uh, of funds in a bank account and then watch as the bills keep continuing to roll in and the funds start to diminish. Um, but more importantly, um, what I've been focusing on with our corporate clients when it comes to cash flow right now is how to break down your cash flow and see fundamentally how long it's going to last you. So instead of looking at the overall picture and saying, okay, I've, I've got $5,000 in my bank account and it's, it's, it's just whittling away and it's driving me you know, nuts and I'm getting all this anxiety. What do you look at? And so what we started to do, and this is definitely a vein from, you know, along what you say to us as, as, as coaching clients as well. So something I'm trying to practice myself is that instead of looking at the overwhelming landscape of everything going on, just go, okay, what do I need in the next week? What do I need in the next two weeks? What do I need in the next month? Okay, how do I possibly get it? So then you're breaking down your sources of funding and saying, okay, am I operating partially? Am I, am I totally stopped? Um, do I have the opportunity to take care of, uh, or sorry, take care of myself using government grants or government funding? Um, definitely one of those fun scenarios and by fun, I mean, not fun at all, but um, getting a lot of feedback from people that are going personally after things like the Canada Emergency Relief Benefit, using it to inject cash flow into their business to bridge the gap if you don't qualify for some of the other subsidies that are out there very specifically at the moment. Um, but definitely with cash flow, it's very easy to get overwhelmed when we look at the, the grand scheme of things and, and not that we should lose sight of the overall goal of what we need to accomplish and what our overall funds look like, but it's very easy to just get lost in the spiral of, well, I can't last three months. And then you get lost in focusing on, on what you can do in say a week. Right. So in a week, what could what what can you directly affect in a week? Because you don't know what the landscape's gonna look like in a month. You don't know what the landscape's gonna look like in three months. So to build up all that anxiety and all of that stress because you're going, Oh my god, my funds don't 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 make it three months, you don't know that. 
but you can control what you need to pay in the next week, what you need to pay in the next two weeks, and what you need to pay in the next month. That you can fairly well manage. Um, again, everybody's got a little bit different situation going on, but it's really about trimming the fat too. So really taking a hard look at what you're spending um, to make sure that what you are spending um, is going to the right places and it's doing the most amount of good that it possibly can. Um, I did a, I did a webinar last week on just doing a, a full financial review of your business um, while, while you're in a downturn like this, while you're in a crisis. And, and really it's just going back in and, and really reevaluating what you want to do with your business. And, and so then in that sense, can we turn off some things that we would normally spend money on and extend our cash flow a little bit? And if not, then writing down the reasons why those things are important to help us refocus on driving up our energy in order to keep pushing forward through uh, a more difficult time. Mm, yeah. Very, very interesting. So cash flow management is a, is a daily and weekly process then. And I mean, you and I have discussed this quite a bit for, but for everybody listening, everybody going forward, cash flow is, is not to be trifled with. And that is literally your lifeblood. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to cast aspersion, if you will, for a moment at the bookkeeper <laughs> accountant to the world. But often what we will hear as business owners is that, you know, your business is doing well. In fact, your financials say you're doing good. You, you reported profit. But I've, I've experienced watching this with other businesses in the past, that your fiscal health at the end of a year, your net profitability and your cash is not relational. So if we're to take these steps now and to break it down into what's happening today, what's happening tomorrow, what's happening in the next week, next two weeks, next month, that is going to help get us back on a pace or a track where, where it is more manageable, more controllable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 very tempting to look at your end your year end figures and say, okay, this is this is either the overall health or the overall um, you know, but my business is either doing well or it's not. But financial statements themselves don't capture the daily transactions. Like they they do. They're the summation of the yearly transactions, but they don't really they don't give you um, a daily or weekly or monthly trend. Um, when we do financial statements, specifically if you're incorporated, you you're going to see the snapshot of what your total categories were for the last year and what they are for the current year. Um, so we suggest, especially times like this, really digging into either software or building yourself or getting yourself. Um, other um, software that can allow you to dig into more budgeting tools. So um, for example, um, if you're using QuickBooks Online, right now is a really great uh, time to be using it because it has a comparative budget um, built into it. So if I wanna look at what I did on April 15th, 2019, versus what I did on April 15th, 2020, I can actually run a report and tell myself that. I can tell what I did um, on a weekly basis. So this week, last year, right? So for say for us, we're in tax season right now. Tax season is nothing like it should look like. Yes, we're doing taxes. Yes, we're busy, but it's not like the statistics. Um, one of my girls was looking up the statistics last uh, last night, and it's like a third of Canadians have filed taxes, whereas three times would three times as many people would have traditionally been filed by this point already. So we end up with these government extensions, and and so we're we're looking at stuff like that. But when I look at it, my two week period here versus what my two week period last year was is totally wrong. It looks like I'm down 75%. I know I'll see it over the long term, but we're down just because people aren't mad rushing through our doors the last two weeks of tax season like they would be traditionally in the past. So it's it's when you're looking at you know your overall financial health, you should be comparing smaller periods of time, whether it be days to days or whether it be weeks to weeks or week or months to months. That's where you actually start to see the fine details of what makes you successful and what periods you need to either drive up your advertising or, or rework your numbers or get a little creative. That's, that's how you actually make your business successful. And all those little movements throughout the year are what contribute to your overall end numbers at the end of the year. Okay. It's interesting you mentioned, and I mean, not to get ahead of ourselves to come around to tools for a moment, but an awful lot of your banking apps these days. And I mean, you, you pick up this thing mm -hmm. and you, you log online, it will tell you, in fact, you know, my app tells me, for example, I've spent a lot more money at Safeway in the last little while than I've spent anywhere else during a traditional period, probably because <laughs> we're all stuck at home. And what do we all do recreationally? We eat, <laughs> you know, eat. And, and I mean, yeah. everybody's home all the time, not packing up and taking lunches away. So that alone is part of our snapshot on a daily and a weekly basis where we want to look at last year's trends as well. But we want to look at yeah. a shorter period of time. What happened last week? What do I have? What am I going to spend yeah. this week? What am I going to budget for, et cetera? So we're... Yeah moving back with technology to that point where let's call it what it is our grandparents learned to balance a checkbook 
and cash flow management is essentially bounce like a checkbook. How much cash do I have now? What am I going to spend this week? How much do I think I'm going to bring in? What am I going to be left over with? And to be, uh, uh, you know, a prognosticator here, how much am I going to need next week? And what am I going to have to chase at that point? Yeah. Yeah. But doing it in bite-sized chunks like that, right? So they weren't always, they won't, they weren't doing it three months at a time. They weren't doing it at six months at a time. They were doing it in daily, weekly, and, and maybe at the maximum monthly, um, because that's like, when you say a different time, right? When you live in a, in a time where maybe you might not have a job or you might not live past a month, right? It's just, what are your priorities and priorities? And are you looking to stick to the same normal that you've been using or are you adapting? Um, it's things like developing a crisis budget, right? What makes it different than a normal budget? Well, it's number one, going to be on a shorter time frame scale and it's going to be um, uh, protective of your money rather than just being like, okay, well, I know the times are good and I can spend and I have this much ad. know what to do with this but it's it's such an important skill that people need to have um and hey you got all this free time on your hand it's a great time to learn it absolutely okay so let's move away from cash flow for a moment because well we've just heard it as simply as we can have it stated this is just like our grandparents balancing a checkbook and and this is a skill that we have to relearn redevelop and where else are we gonna have the time and the opportunity to do it so you can you can get a stiff drink or you can get a cup of coffee and start to look at what's going on realistically with the physical cash you've got right now, what you're going to spend this week and what you're going to need over the next little while. Past that, financial health and the financial health for our business. And yes, we're having, oh, much like everything else, some lag issues. That So so finances, financial documents, the financial of the business. We've got cash flow management, and now we've got the financial aspect of our business. And I mean, there's the parts of it to start with, you know, balance sheet, profit loss statement or your income statement coming at the end of the year, et cetera. And, you know, so, and then of course, your, your actual cash flow management here, which is part of that first conversation. There's the parts of what we've got to do. What does that really mean for business owners? And what do they need to understand about it, of course? And why is that so important? And again, we, just, we just finished saying cash is more important than your financial structure. That's not entirely true. No, no, don't get me wrong. By saying that cash flow is more important, it, it's, it's, there are aspects of it that are more important. Um, mostly because if you lose track of your cash flow, you lose your ability to be able to, to manage everything as a whole, right? If you, if you can't get on top of that cash flow, everything else that's supplemental. to bring in. I think right now the biggest piece of advice I give people as far as other financial tools um, and things to focus on would be to break down, um, would just be to break down um, kind of, so first of all, I guess if we're talking about um, financial tools, I don't know if I necessarily, should I be doing this specifically for corporations or should be doing this as business owners in general? Because there oh, are some important tweaks. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, financial tools in general, basically what we want to be looking at is we want to be looking at cash flow, we want to be looking at structure, we want to look at advertising, we want to look at, at, at basically our internals, our onboarding, stuff like that. I know there's been some other fantastic talks and there are some more coming up which are going to pair up and be very complimentary talking about other tools inside your business like um, business development as far as employees or, or manuals or things like that. And those are all really important pieces of the internals. Now, when we're talking about other financial tools from the accounting perspective, honestly, what I'm trying to get people to focus on is, again, just how to make what you've got in the bank go the farthest. So when we're talking about prioritizing debt, we're talking about consolidating, we're talking about um, basically starting to look at those, dig into those expenses and what we're actually spending money on and evaluating whether or not they're going to be um, important to the existence of our business today and how we get through the next you know, two months, three months, um, six months versus if 
if we're going to need those um if we're going to need those at all right so if we if we want to uh we want to talk about financial tools that are going to make i think the most difference to people right now it would be let's go back to examining do we understand the fundamentals of what's involved with our own finances do we understand what's considered income what's considered a deferral do we understand um do we understand how to budget do we understand um what types of expenses we are entitled to um this is one of those times where things are a little bit more tight around the edges because everybody's being very conscious just with their dollars. Um, it's actually a really perfect time to start looking at the things that qualify as business expenses that maybe we're not necessarily considering. People are like, well, I have no expenses right now. I'm not working. I'm like, well, you're still paying for your house, right? Great. You still have a home office going on. Are you paying for advertising? Are you paying for gas in your car? Are you paying for your cell phone and your internet and things like that? Yes. So those are really positive things that are still playing into financial tools for your business, um, regardless of whether you're earning a lot of income or not. Now, my opinion when it comes to writing off things when you're not active in business is basically like if you have the intent to be making income right now then you're still qualifying to write those things off and i think that that's that's something that people don't really think about like if you're constantly searching out leads you're starting conversations you're networking you're doing all those things you have the ability to be pushing and and looking for new business which means you still get the qualification against some of those other expenses which is really important um when we're talking about you know balance sheets basically you're if we're talking about corporations we're talking about balance sheets things that we want to be focusing on are um long-term and short-term debts so do we have the ability to pay our debt payments? So whether that be bank loans, whether that be private loans, whether that be paying ourselves, whether that be, um, whether that be looking at just general accounts payable, general accounts receivable. And, and so on the flip side, what am I, what, what's coming in? Where am I, where are the dollars in my bank account? Where are the balances on my credit card? Where are the balances on available loans that could be dispersed to me? and then really tying it all back to budgeting. So um, the, the income statement is basically just looking at, here's my gross revenue, here's all my expenses, and here's my net profit. Um, I definitely, I am personally telling people to stop focusing on the big stuff and just come back all to the little, the little bits of stuff. So the, the little things that make a difference adding up day after day uh, when it comes to your money and finance. So instead of really worrying about looking at the overall health of your business, not that you shouldn't, be still doing that but to come down and really start to examine like i said what are your write-offs what can you write off now even though things are limited what do you need to in order to be able to to utilize um what, what do you need to do when the when the economy ultimately goes back up right so it's really easy to go okay i'm either putting a stop on all of my business activities um, because there's nothing to do and then losing the focus and the traction and the consistency to build your business back up when things start up again or you're going the opposite way, which is, okay, I have to, you know, okay, sure, the actual business income coming in has to stop, but all the stuff I'm doing in the background, so advertising and networking and marketing, like all of that stuff is what we're doing preemptively so that when the business comes back in, we haven't basically skipped a beat. Like we, we, we just, we've just moved on no matter what. Um, and that is, that is one of those things. You can see Katie in the background of my video. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's one of those things that's very easy to lose focus on is, is how do we work with all our financial tools to keep that momentum going once things do start to pick back up. Um, I shared a thing on Facebook, a picture on Facebook, and it said, don't bash the business owners that are busy marketing and the business owners that are busy advertising and the business owners that are busy talking about their business just because you're not working. What's happening is those people are putting everything they've got in to not lose momentum that they've been building for the last, you know, however long. I've got clients that said I was on, I was on a, a growth trajectory to do double what I did last year. Now I'm just, you know, I'm reevaluating and I think I'm going to be at like 30 or 40% of what I, what I expected to be at, but at least I'm going up once things start to pick up right so then it's coming back to again once things start to pick up are we conscious of what our debts are are we conscious of what our minimum payments are are we conscious of you know what we can write off what's eligible what's not um and just making sure that we're examining the internal workings of our business from that standpoint as well so that when things do start to um once everything does start to come back in, are we ready and poised to basically jump back in both feet and hit the ground running and get back to where we were previously as soon as we can? So that's kind of what I'm 
Okay, so just again, focusing on the little stuff, working on what our write-offs are, looking at what our debts are, looking at what we actually need for write-offs versus what we don't. Um, if you guys have any questions about things you can write off and things like that, I, I'm more than happy to send kind of a, a cheat sheet that's pretty universal to most businesses because it really does come down to what can you claim, what's eligible, what's not, and then making sure at this point you're being as diligent as possible with everything you possibly can. That means keeping all your receipts regardless of whether, again, you're running active business or not because most of us are looking to generate new leads and new business for the future once things pick up. That's unbelievably important. So... I don't know. That's some thoughts, Mitch. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. Tools. Talk us through. There's going to be stuff that we have to use. We need to use. We want to use. And then I'm going to, I'm going to circle back around once again to that, that foundational structure to kind of close off and then tie everything off as we're talking with everybody here. So tools, okay. what are business owners and what should people be using to make sure that they're maximizing getting through and more importantly, being able to keep track of, their cash, their cash flow, their financials, and then what we've just been discussing about here, particularly in light of write-offs, which are uh, every business owner's best friend. Cool. Um, so this one I'm going to break down into a couple of different parts. Um, I'm going to dive into the actual very business specific side of it, plus some things personally that marry in because most of us are owner operators. So that means us, the individual, our family is specifically sustained by what we do in our business. So the three things that I'm going to talk about, um, I guess it's two, but it's expanded into somewhat three. Um, budgeting and software. So budgeting, um, obviously, that's that's one of the things that, from an accounting and finance perspective, budgeting is is it. If you want your business to be successful, you need to be budgeting in some form. Um, there are lots of tools as far as what you can do with that, um, but honestly, you need to have a regular business operating budget, and you need to create a crisis budget for your business. That means what happens if my income cuts in half? What happens if my income cuts down to a third? What happens if my business completely disappears for X amount of time? And, and yes, I'm talking about having multiple budgets, but I mean, realist, realistically, what you're building is so big and so important that it requires some external, like some extra dedication to what, to what your business is, which means, yes, you need to use budgets. It, B is the, it's the dirty B word that nobody wants to talk about, but having a business budget and having a crisis budget are going to be the things that make or break your business right now. If you are not conscious of what you spend your money on, you it's not it's not overall advantageous for the for the preservation of your business um there's a couple of really uh, easy tools that you can look at so like i said if we're talking about and marrying into the other one which is software um right now software is is it's going to help you if you do your own bookkeeping make sure you get yourself into a software that has some additional tools uh hopefully for a decent price my recommendation all day long is going to be quickbooks online and the reason why it's going to be QuickBooks Online over everything else is because it allows you to update in real time for half the work. Um, it's got a budget system built right into it. Now, it's got the limitation of only being able to run one budget at a time, which means you're not going to be able to build all those excess budgets inside QuickBooks Online. So what QuickBooks Online is really good for is it's saying, okay, here's what I think I should be spending. Here's what I think I should be making. And then it'll actually fill in the specific categories for you as you code them when your transaction come in from your bank account. So that's really great for watching. And and then it marries it in and pulls it into those weekly, monthly, and yearly reports for you, which is what we do. Uh, what That's what we look at traditionally as, as bookkeepers and accountants when we talk about explaining to you your overall business health. Um, other tools that, like Mitch mentioned, on your cell phone. There are some really easy, very affordable, free uh, free options there. The cool part is, is your bank, like like you said, absolutely comes with a built-in uh, budgeting tool now. Um, it's free, doesn't cost you anything, and it'll actually pick up transactions as you spend them out of your bank account. So similar to QuickBooks Online, but if, say, you, you don't need the full, like you, you're just looking for a personal, um, a personal budget versus, say, a business budget, you can run one in each of your apps. So one for your business bank account, one for your personal personal bank account, um, but it's it's a very simple, simple method to get a budget tool. The other thing is, I mean, if you Google 
budgeting budgeting tools. I mean, there's there's a million under the sun. It's really cool. I did my own little re research and and crisis budgets. That's a huge thing. There's a little like, wonderful niche market on the internet of people preparing for crisis budgets, uh, mostly coming from and I will say this from other countries in the world because you know, where we get, we get a little bit of a soft cushion in North America and in Canada where we don't have major, major, major disaster. Inside your business here regardless um, so I mean there, there's like I said get it yourself a business budget just a general business budget and then get yourself a crisis budget and then while you're doing that do the same thing for your personal so make sure you have a personal budget and a personal crisis budget so if you are an owner operator of a business all you're doing is measuring okay if my business is this size and it does this I could pay myself this this equates to here's all my expenses on the personal side. So if your business itself cuts in half, well then make sure you're translating it out to your personal because there are specific things that are absolutely mandatory need to pay in your personal where maybe you need to cut something in your business so that you can pay for the personal stuff. Or like I said, there's business owners that are collecting personal subsidies and a position for them. Now, the other thing that I recommend um, when it comes to software and stuff like that is, is, is QuickBooks Online for multiple reasons. Um, first of all, you can get it on your computer, you can get it on your phone, you can get it on your tablet, you can take it with you on the go. You can basically access your own bookkeeping, accounting, and financial records anywhere that you have an internet connection, which is really great. Um, if at this point you have not used a software before, um, it's a great way to take advantage of some downtime. Um, definitely heard lots of feedback from people going, I don't know what to do with my time. I don't know what to do with my time. This doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't know what to do. I'm like, have you budgeted lately? And they go, whoo, that sounds like so much fun. And you're like, but seriously, a week sacrifice, you know, a week <laughs> I, I do talk too fast, but <laughs> so Danny, if I can for a moment um, here, spending I can just, a little bit of time. Yeah, if I can jump in. So uh, QuickBooks is a fantastic tool. I know there's another one out there that's really comparable. Uh, and once again, much like Zoom that we're on right now, it's called Zoom as well. Uh, a, a, a great, also another great suite of software that worked very well. Uh, mm -hmm. I've had the request already that uh, we have questions. And yeah. so let's dive in right now if we can. Uh, Ashley, I know cool. you had a question while we're on here for the call. Let's definitely get into it. Somebody else is going to have them as well. Otherwise, we're going to let, uh, we're going to let Danny do her job, which is to, to pound as much information into us as possible so that we can maximize this time. Awesome. I'm I just, with regards to specifically your clients and how you'd like to receive you know, expenses or anything at the end of the year, would you prefer to have a client that has all of things like in a QuickBooks like you described or in, you know, another program that's out there or is an Excel spreadsheet kind of like I showed you yesterday, but an Excel spreadsheet with all mm -hmm. expenses mapped out by item, like what's your preference? Um, that's a really great question. So my opinion is that when you are say a sole proprietorship, there, there's a lot more flexibility in things you, you can my profession my hundred different software from an absolute preference standpoint I don't actually have one um, all I'm looking for primarily is to educate you so that you know what to write off and how much to write off so that whatever you do choose to plug the numbers into it's easy to read and easy to digest and then it keeps our bill lower because we don't have to charge you for extra time if we don't need to um, but if you become incorporated you need to get yourself into some grown-up software okay if you're <laughs> sole proprietorship well it's, it's true okay so if you if you're a sole proprietorship um, wave accounting fresh books quick books or like, um, sorry, Wave Accounting, FreshBooks, um, Zero Accounting, uh, stuff like that. That's that's very adequate software that does invoicing. It does basic, you know, basic income and expenses tracking. It has good reports. It it pulls out nicely to to the programs that we use, like Profile, to do your actual personal taxes. But when you become a corporation, you needing to be. 
inside your business, get yourself into some grown up software, get yourself into simply accounting, get yourself into QuickBooks online, get yourself into something like that, because it's going to give you more meat and potatoes. It's going to marry up a ton of different financial tools into one spot. And at most you're looking at 30 to 40 bucks a month, which it's a write off. So it's, it's worth investing in. Um, and some of them actually even have like helpful suggestion tools built in that also say, okay, if you did this, you could pull this type of report. You watch tutorials, things like that. So from a preference standpoint, I don't have one. Um, just getting yourself into something that, that helps you digest the information that you've got. Absolutely. But there's also an SOS in my business name, which means we help people with the shoe boxes all the time. Yeah. And if that's the case, I just throw them into an Excel document for them. So it, it's, it depends on what you want out of your bookkeeping, um, as well as, of course, yes, we always, it's a, it's a treat when people care what, what your tax, what the. Oh no, Danielle, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> we lost you there for a second. <laughs> of course you did. Uh-oh. Okay. What right. cut did it did it any of that translate out or did it totally cut out? Yeah, the most of it did, just the just the last little bit, but that's okay. I, I got I got the gist of it. Um when you have when you're a sole proprietor and you've got um you've got expenses on that Excel document, do you want receipts to accompany that or is the Excel document appropriate? Yeah, basically, that's a great question too. So basically how we work is we work on limited liability. So it basically means that you can give me your receipts to review and check, but then again, there's time charged against you. If you're confident that you've done all the legwork and that the numbers are complete, we don't actually need to see the receipts because we're just preparing the tax return at that point, which means that you take responsibility for the accuracy and completeness of, of backing up those figures. So you would be the one actually physically getting audited if something were to happen in the future. And then what the Oh, no. Sorry. Um, but as long as we have the total numbers in a spreadsheet, that's all we need. Oh, okay. okay. So you just said, oh, no. So I'm assuming that's because you didn't keep all your receipts. Am I correct? No, no. It's because you froze again. It's okay. I got the gist of it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I Thank swear you. I'm off Wi-Fi. I no, that's okay. Hopefully. I don't know. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Mitch, you're on mute. If we're going to start today as a business owner, what do we start with? Mm, get yourself, if you're, if you're a sole proprietorship, email me and I'll send you a wonderful sole proprietorship master tracking spreadsheet. That's the easiest answer. Um, if you want something free, get fresh books on your phone. It allows you to take uh, pictures of your receipts and catalog them digitally. So you don't actually have to hold on to all your paper and the limited version on your phone is free. That's a great tool otherwise. Um, if you're incorporated, again, same thing. You can use uh, FreshBooks on your phone. You can use like wave accounting and stuff like that. But if, if you're looking for something that means I'm gonna start the process right today, get yourself into the basic version of QuickBooks Online. 30 bucks, it will do you a world of favors long-term. Okay, so yeah. that we're clear. I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to start writing down my cash flow on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be looking at mm -hmm. how much money I need, how much I've got. I'm going to be essentially go back to grandma and grandpa's balancing a checkbook, looking at how much money I've got. Mm -hmm. I'm going to invest yep. probably 30 bucks a month and get myself some software or heck, if you find a deal on it, you're going to invest in it early so that you can keep track yep. of everything and turn everything over to a bookkeeper or an accountant in a reasonable fashion. And then you're going to be looking at your financials coming at the end of the year. What do they tell me and how do they tell me I'm doing a good job? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, the, 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 the push and recommendation for software like QuickBooks Online really comes because it just does all the hard work for you. All of providing the answers with very minimal extra contribution from you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What does somebody need to know if they're starting today? from like what to write off and, and how, to, exactly. how to do a budget. Um, if you are just starting 
or wanting to start a business today, um, what you need to know is you need to know what you can write off. Um, again, the easiest way for me to go through that is I have a cheat sheet for that. Um, I can just make sure that that ends up in the hands of syndicate, a couple of my cheat sheets and things like that. So if you guys are already members of syndicate, it'll be available to you. If you're not a member of syndicate yet or not necessarily maybe planning to be um, obviously reach out I do have a good chunk of them on my on my website as well but essentially what we want to do is we want to identify what we can write off so that from day one we're being very conscious with what we're spending our money on so that if we have you know, your ones that are business write-offs versus the ones that aren't right and if you have a very creative accountant then you figure out how to make most things a business write-off <laughs> Um, but it really comes down to, like you said, so fundamentals for a new business owner, start a budget from day one. That means every piece of money going into your bank account, track where it's coming from, who it's coming from. And if you got paid for a full invoice or a partial invoice, you're taking a deposit for a job things like that. And then just start tracking what you're spending your money on. So you go to the gas station, you put fuel in your, in your tank. That's just gas. Start tracking it. Okay. I go to McDonald's. I buy myself a coffee. I'm on the way to meet a client. Great. That's meals. Put it under meals. I started a website. I need to uh, register a domain name. I need to do, you know, registration of a trade name. Great. That goes on the spreadsheet. That's registration for business. I go to Staples to pick up a box of paper. That's office. Just if you, if you're not going to invest in the software on day one, which is fine, get yourself an Excel, an Excel spreadsheet and just start tracking what you spend your money on meaning just every single time a transaction comes in your bank account tell me you know tell me or tell you or tell whoever what it is because after the fact to go back and try to remember what all those things are later in life it is hard so starting it from day one and just starting to track this is what I this is the day this is where I went this is what I spent it on that's all we need but the like I said the advantages of pairing it up with something like even just fresh books on your phone having a Get yourself a damn shoebox, put all the loose receipts in a shoebox and make sure they stay in the shoebox until you have time to sit down and sort them. But I mean, everybody's sitting there with an excess of time on their hands right now, which means just get yourself an Excel spreadsheet and start right now to <clears throat> what you spend your money on and where your incoming money comes from. One of the best tools I was ever given. And so for everybody out there, we're talking about that dirty shoebox with all your receipts. Actually, this is really old school. And I learned from a mentor of mine years ago now. And you would have to, of course, order it online since you can't go to a store. Order one of those pocket calendars. Order a pocket calendar and every time you get a receipt or print it off and stick it in for the week where that pocket calendar is and keep all your receipts in order lined up day to day, week to week, month to month. At the end of the year, you take the entire book, you turn it into your account or bookkeeper and that way they've got a chronological order of where all the receipts came into and that way you're done and organized. Yep. Yep. Um... What do you do with the old receipts? How old are we talking about? Are we talking about during the course of the year or stuff previous to the current year? Sorry, I'm looking, oh. trying to look at chat. Okay, oh. old. So, okay, so um, current year, you want to keep everything. Um, if you if you're using an app where you take a photo of it, you can literally just throw out the receipt, um, shred it preferably because it's got your banking information on it. Um, but if not, if it's older than that, you have to keep all of your physical records or records of some form, either digital or physical for seven years. So if you have a business, get yourself a box, put everything to do with that, that year in a box, label it and throw it on a shelf somewhere. The reason why I push for more digital options now is because physical receipts fade over time. So you, everybody stuck a carbon paper receipt in their back pocket on a hot day it's gone, right? The, the ink just evaporates. So if it's something where you can get yourself into receipts, storage capabilities don't have to be so massive because you're, you're storing digital information. Um, and number two, you're not worrying about those receipts fading over time because I have watched and I have argued for clients when they're going back and they're trying to submit receipts from seven years ago and 90% of them are all faded and CRA is going, well, we can't read it. So, you know, it's not valid. And you're like, this is crap because you guys only approved digital receipts in 2018, which means that for everything older than that, what are we supposed to do? So I'm just, trying to get people prepared that preemptively, if you can do something slightly more digital, it is going to help you out in the future because CRA can't say anything. And if you don't want to use the software, 
take your phone, just take a regular picture of your receipt and put it in a Google Drive or a Dropbox or something so that you have that record because the paper does fade. Day that you got that receipt. So if you are at all tech savvy, that is one that is one piece of extra work. I highly, highly That makes sense. Yeah. Helpful, thought provoking. Anybody else? Standing the more savvy business owners before we sign off here. Mm -hmm. What should people mm -hmm. be taking from today moving forward for their business? We've heard an awful lot of that. What is one piece of mm -hmm. advice that's missing that makes people's lives so much easier moving forward? And of course, when it comes to the financial aspects of their business, that really helps to shorten the process, the time again. It's self-fulfilling because you've said an awful lot, but let's re let's reencapsulate here for people. Yeah, um, a statistic that I like to throw out, it, and this will this will tie in, is it says uh, money and finances ruin more marriages than infidelity. Not knowing where your money is going and coming from is the root of a hell of a lot of anxiety, and we're living in a culture where mental health is a very large focus. And, and when dealing with clients right now, the biggest bit of money is coming in and they don't know really what they spend their money on or why. So if you're going to spend any time right now when it comes to money and finance, just start to get acquainted with what you actually spend your money on, okay? So easiest thing, take three months of bank statements and just, put them into an Excel document and add up what you spend on things. You will start to identify how much skip the dishes that you order. You will start to identify how much shopping you do. You will start to identify how much your hair and makeup and all the other things cost. You will start to figure out, you know, the good stuff too, right? But that that's, that's one of the most valuable tools I can give people is if you are conscious of where your dollars are being spent, even if it's, if it's just chicken scratch on a piece of paper, you are going to make better financial decisions. It's just, it's the We appear to be frozen out here. Let's see if she pops back in. There we go. You, you popped out okay. on us pretty big there that time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I was just saying mint is, a, mint is a good option for budgeting. I forget about that. Yeah, and there's a but, great uh, option for budget. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like I said, just learn to be conscious of where your money's going. If you know where your money's going, your anxiety will be so much lower and you will just, you'll just be in a much better position to number one, ha handle crisis, um, both short term and long term. And using those little steps every day makes your entire annual picture, your annual budgeting, your annual financials, just number one, just make more sense to you. So that'd be the, that'd be the tool. Okay. Questions, comments, or thoughts? For our participants, I know much like the rest of the world right now, we're having some internet connectivity issues. It does not take away <laughs> from the importance of some of the information that is coming at you today. There are resources available. Danny, where can they find some of these resources? Um, I personally, I have a bunch on my website. So that's www.danielle.sosbookkeeping.com. Um, like I said, Mint is one of those great free tools. You just got to just Google Mint. Um, you can Google, uh, like I said, crisis budgets. Um, I'm working on putting a couple more together. I'll try and get those up on the website in the next week or so. Um, but if you do anything, grab yourself just a regular free budget, you know, just search Excel documents. There's a million free templates. Um, but otherwise, QuickBooks Online, uh, fresh books on your phone, um, just punch them into Google. But otherwise, I will, I'm doing my best to just kind of amass more resources uh, on our website. Um, our Facebook, I try and share things as, as often as I can as well. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of options out there. Just, just the power of Google compels you.
<laughs> use the Google it. Use the Google. It will reward you. <laughs> Absolutely. There are a ton of resources. There's videos, there's documents, there's places to come like your website to come and find more of these. There are there are a giant pile of resources for those that are joining us today. Inside a yeah. syndicate, of course, we've got membership resources available. And for those yeah. outside as well, you can come and look, touch, taste, feel, find them. The the world is far smaller now due to technology for some of those technology issues that we have. And there's there's really no excuse for not being aware and for being educated. You know, when it comes to finances and money, as you said, and you know, I, for me as a coach, both for business and working with people itself money and our relationship with our with our partners and our spouses uh, suffers devastatingly because we are not being aware inside of our own relationship from a personal and intimate level and because we're not being honest when it comes to money the same structures or the same stressors have effects inside of our businesses between business partnerships etc you know there might not be the same intimate level of relationship but business partnerships can dissolve in a hurry because we do not have an accurate handle or understanding what's going on with the finances. So to be unaware in an era when we have access to tools and technology and for what is ultimately a very little cost and a little bit of time is, is something that as business owners, we must overcome in a hurry. And to go back to something as simple as the practice of balancing your checkbook, <laughs> five, you know, five fundamental pieces of information. How much money do I have right now? How much am I going to make? What do I have to spend on myself and on my regular roof over my head, my business to run? What am I left with to start next week? It's powerful and it's so simplistic, but yet the bulk of us forget to do it on a regular basis. And then of course, to expand from there, to make sure we are educated enough so that when we are dealing with our bookkeeper account and looking at our software, we understand the basics and the fundamentals so that we can directly answer questions about our own business, we can put ourselves at ease and we can ask smart questions in turn. And then when it comes to those tools that are going to help us, of course, taking time and opportunity to educate, educate ourselves and invest in those. So Danielle, thank you as always, uh, you know, two years of relationship for us to work together and have the opportunity to bring you on and help you share with people that for today is, you know, we had, we had 11 other people join us today and for in the coming weeks and months as people get a chance to look at this, digest, and hopefully expand their own education that they have an opportunity mm -hmm. to learn from there and to expand. For those of us that joined us on the call today, questions or comments, do not hesitate to get a hold of Danielle or myself. Mm -hmm. Feel free to reach out at any point in time. People are here to help you find the resources and the tools that you need, the education that's going to help you expand and grow your business because this is vital for you. Mm -hmm. There are five things in life when it comes to business that you need. You need to manage your cash flow. And as Danny talked about to start with, you need to be really critical with your time. That, build, that means educating yourself. You need to be able to sell and market effectively. And, and you need a plan for your business. Your finances and your money touch on all those areas. So to do them effectively means that you are doing what is required as a business owner to grow. Danielle, thank you for doing this to our audience. Thank you for joining us today. For those that watch in the coming Absolutely. days, weeks, and months, we hope you find it just as educational and feel free. In fact, we implore you. We, we charge you to reach out and to find those resources <laughs> and the education that we've got available to you. I hope that everybody has a fantastic day. Watch for the next seminar coming out today. Three Financial Tools of Syndicate Talk. Watch for the next ones coming up and have a fantastic day. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>